AMD is in a weird place when it comes to ray tracing performance because in some games, like, you know, the path tracing RT overdrive mode in Cyberpunk, uh, AMD's current generation flagship, the 7900 XTX, actually gets uh, completely uh, trounced by the RTX 3090, which is the previous generation NVIDIA flagship. And we see similar results in games, like if I jump ahead here, you know, uh, Alan Wake 2, another big path tracing showcase from NVIDIA. Uh, however, this is not the case uh, performance-wise in every game out there. Uh, for example, uh, Graphical showcases like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, arguably one of the best looking games ever made, uh, which does use ray tracing actually at all settings. It, it's not a game where you can just turn ray tracing off. Uh, this is a game where the 7900 XDX is outperforming the RTX 3090. Now that's Nvidia's last generation flagship. Of course, the XDX isn't beating the 4090, although price class wise, they're not necessarily directly competing there with the 4090 anyway, but even the 4080, again, uh, can come out ahead there. And we see other titles that feature some levels of ray tracing, like if I skip ahead here, um, something like uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, which offers uh, some ray tracing in its max settings, although it's pretty limited. We again see the 7900 XTX pulling ahead of the uh, 3090 previous generation flagship. Uh, what I'm really trying to get at here is that ray tracing, its performance, how it works in games, depends on a lot of factors, uh, a, a lot of optimizations to how that particular ray tracing workload is implemented, how it's designed, uh, what sort of hardware it was targeting when it was designed, um, and just how much of the scene, the lighting, the shadows, reflections, everything is actually being ray traced and how much of it isn't. So there's a lot that goes on to that. And that is tying into uh, the new information for today's video, which is this post to Twitter from Kepler, which says that these, uh, off to the side here, are some of the new RT features coming with a GFX 12 slash RDNA 4. Uh, most, if not all of these, should be in the PS5 Pro 2. Now, before I dive into my thoughts on all of these fancy words, uh, let's talk about the source. So this is Kepler. Kepler is a pretty well-known hardware leaker uh, with a track record that has actually got many things correct in the past, especially recently uh, regarding leaks about like the PlayStation 5 Pro. Uh, and and uh, related to that. However, uh, in my knowledge, having reported for uh, probably about four years now on the GPU uh, news, which includes the leaks and rumors scene and all of that, I don't think everything Kepler has predicted ha on Twitter has come to pass. So do take that with a grain of salt. Now, uh, the uh, place I found this information originally was videocards.com, uh, who uh, also tracks this kind of leak and rumor uh, mill uh, quite closely. And uh, here's their analysis of Kepler as a source for this type of information, videocards.com saying, Kepler was among the first leakers to mention both the PlayStation 5 Pro specs and the fact that it uses a custom chip with AMD RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 features. Uh, I remember that being true. Um, and uh, again, shortly after that, there was a whole bunch of other confirmation. So it did seem like Kepler was one of the first people uh, to get some kind of documented information about the PS5 Pro specs. He was also the first to claim that AMD would be dropping its plans for high-end discrete Navi 4X GPUs. Now, this is something that AMD themselves have not uh, explicitly confirmed. They haven't really been talking about uh, Navi 4X or RDNA 4, uh, you know, officially and what their plans are for their next generation of graphics cards in much detail. However, as videocards.com says here, most if not all of these claims have already been confirmed either by other leakers, which again, it can be okay, are they just kind of parroting stuff they saw other people leaking, or are they actually in the know with their own independent sources, right? Or are they their own source somewhere within some kind of company or supply chain? I don't know. 
uh, or indirectly by AMD through their open source software and driver updates. And this is where the idea of Navi uh, 4X chips not having the high end uh, again, there are up updates to like the Linux dra uh, like graphics kernels and all other pieces of software where updates for the next generation support kind of are uh, available to look at ahead of time. Uh, those do corroborate having the, um, uh, you know, not having the high end on the next RDNA 4 chip. And so, so in other words, uh, this source on this particular information uh, has recently been one of the first to talk about PS5 Pro specs that seem to be confirmed, as well as seeming to have had some early information about RDNA 4. So that would certainly lend credence to this, but again, we're in leaks and rumors territory. Now, if we do roll with it, uh, let's go ahead and read a bunch of big words and see if we uh, can make anything of them. So. Uh, what are the new RT features coming with RDNA 4 potentially making their way to the PS5 Pro? Well, we have double ray tracing intersect engine. We have RT instance node transform, 64B RT node, uh, ray tracing tri pair optimization. We have change flags encoded in Barry Centrix to simplify detection of procedural nodes. That's certainly a sentence I planned on saying when I woke up this morning. Uh, we have BVH footprint improvement. We have RT support for OBB and instance node intersection. So lots of big words. What do they all mean? Well, I need to acknowledge that I am not somebody who designs ray tracing hardware, nor ray tracing graphics engines, uh, nor works with that at this kind of detailed level. So I uh, will just freely acknowledge that explaining exactly what all of this is with supreme confidence is above my pay grade when it comes to that type of detail. However, as I understand it, as this is kind of where I was coming from at the beginning of the video, the way games are optimized for ray tracing, uh, you know, ray tracing isn't just one thing. There's not just, uh, okay, we want ray tracing in this game, so we just click the trace rays button. Uh, you know, the hardware itself has a lot of stuff it needs to do for the types of math that goes on there. And the uh, ray tracing itself can be optimized with uh, different ways of calculating it, the different ways of doing the BVH structure, how many times things are bouncing, what they're bouncing off of, uh, you know, how are you calculating uh, intersections, all sorts of things. Um, and like I've seen, uh, for example, the developers talking about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and how they made a game run at 60 FPS with, with ray tracing at all modes on current generation consoles um, and on all of the kind of crazy cool optimizations they did to make that happen going really deep on like PlayStation 5 hardware uh, to really target that, which is very interesting. Um, so the point is, uh, when you're looking at something like this, just understand that ray tracing has a lot going on behind the scenes with how it works, and how it works in every game can be very different. Uh, because, for example, the optimizations that went into Cyberpunk's RT Overdrive mode, these this isn't a mode that runs on PlayStation 5. So the types of choices they made when uh, designing this ray tracing was really very much, you know, an NVIDIA funded development. So a lot of the, the uh, design choices with how the ray tracing is calculated were made optimized around those, uh, you know, NVIDIA graphics cards. Now they still, it still runs on AMD graphics cards here, uh, but you can certainly see it runs a lot less well. Also, there's just the amount of the scene that is being ray traced. The goal with these path tracing modes uh, in with RT Overdrive and Cyberpunk and you know the full ray tracing modes in uh, Alan Wake 2. The goal here is to make all or at least almost all of the scenes, you know, lighting, shadows, uh, reflections, everything, a, a global illumination, all be ray traced. Now, whether it actually all is, I think I, th I think isn't always the case in, in every piece of it, but. Um, and that's kind of the goal there. Whereas in other games, like if we look at something like Resident Evil 4 Remake, um, uh, there's just a tiny bit of fairly low quality ray traced reflections, right? <laughs> so again, the way ray tracing ends up being implemented by game developers, how it's optimized for certain types of hardware, uh, and certain types of hardware are better or worse at certain things in within ray tracing, 
that's what we're looking at here. Certain elements of ray tracing will be better uh, on this new RDNA 4 hardware. So when the games are then optimized for that, it will be faster at doing certain things, right? That's the idea here. It'll be faster at doing certain things. Now, the author of the videocards.com article where I found uh, this uh, tweet from Kepler originally uh, does make some attempt to explain these, but also acknowledges uh, we compiled the list and tried to provide possible explanations, which, mind you, may be inaccurate. So he's being very clear. Um, that this is an attempt to explain it from a journalist who follows this stuff closely, but again, uh, to my knowledge, the videocards.com author here is also not a ray tracing graphics architect. So, uh, doubling ray tracing intersect engine, the attempted explanation here is, may lead to increased GPU processing for rays in parallel. So in other words, processing more rays in parallel sounds like a good way of speeding up ray tracing, right? RT instance node transform could enable GPUs to handle geometries more efficiently, translation, rotation, scaling, etc. Uh, so transforming, right, can be like moving things around, rotating them. I, I teach transformations in geometry, and it's, it's scaling things up and down and left and right and, um, you know, rotating them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, 64B RT node could improve processing and require less memory. Uh, a ray tracing tri pair optimization could reduce computation load required to calculate ray tracing uh, triangle uh, ray triangle intersections, uh, and I love that the, our our big favorite sentence here: change flags encoded in Barry Centrix to simplify detection of procedural nodes. Question mark is the attempted explanation, and that's about all I've got for you on that one as well. Other than big words sound impressive, so maybe performance go up. Anyway, <laughs> BVH footprint improvement. Uh, so BVH is a bounding volume hierarchy, um, potentially faster grouping of scene geometry. Uh, so, because again, a lot of times you're not tracing against the actual geometry you're seeing in the scene. There's a more simplified version of the geometry with your bounding volume hi uh, hierarchy that you're actually tracing rays against. And this could uh, help with that. Um, um, uh, and then RT support for OBB and instance node intersection. So they're saying that OBB could be uh, referring to oriented bounding box, which may enable higher precision and efficiency by offering smaller bounding volumes. Anyway, so there's some attempt from the videocards.com article uh, to explain some of that. Uh, what do we make of all of this in general? And uh, should we even care about ray tracing uh, performance improvements? So I'll give a little bit of my thoughts on where are we at with ray tracing right now, just in general. I mean, honestly, a lot of games, like, like let's take an example of, you know, the Resident Evil 4 ray, ray tracing implementation. Games like this have some tacked on RT reflections that look grainy and bad. And honestly, I played this game uh, through uh, on my RTX 4090 and I could have turned on those ray traced reflections, but I chose to turn them off because I thought they actually made the game look worse because of how grainy they were. I also took turned off the screen space reflections because they looked grainy and bad as well. I honestly think the game looked better just running off its cube maps with its reflections. So the point is some games uh, turning on ray tracing just takes a performance hit and doesn't even arguably make the game look better, okay? That's where we're at in a lot of games where the games weren't really developed with ray tracing in mind. However, I do think that we're moving towards a world where game developers will want to use ray tracing as their default way of developing the games. But when will we get there? Uh, this uh, made me think of the recent interview with PlayStation 5's lead system architect, Mark Cerny, uh, talking about he was actually surprised how quickly ray tracing was being adopted on the PlayStation 5. Uh, he thought it would come in a, a little more heavily in the latter parts of the console generation. Um, so why would game developers want to be moving towards ray tracing if you can already produce good looking games without ray tracing and uh, the, honestly, the ray tracing hardware on something like the PlayStation 5 isn't really that powerful or that impressive to work with. So, so why are they kind of struggling along with that? Uh, well, again, if you look at something like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, uh, where the game was and, and the engine was kind of redesigned uh, with Snow, Snowdrop engine, it's really interesting to listen to the game devs uh, talk about developing this engine. But anyway, um, uh, kind of de designed from the ground up with that ray tracing implementation in mind, uh, for one thing, it looks great, uh, but for another thing, I think this speeds up game development.
because that's where a lot of, uh, I think, the end users of the video games kind of miss one of the really attractive things about uh, ray tracing uh, for game development, which is from the end user perspective, a lot of times you get games that look absolutely gorgeous with no ray tracing in them at all. So you think, uh, you know, so what's the point of ray tracing? Games with ray tracing just make my frame rate go way down. Uh, and I've already seen other games look really good that didn't use ray tracing, right? But from the game developer's perspective, uh, when you're trying to do a bunch of baked lighting, that really slows down the game development process. It makes it more time consuming, uh, which ends up costing a lot more money uh, in the long run to develop the game. Uh, so being able to do ray tracing for lighting and shadows and reflections and global illumination all in real time in development, I think really speeds up game development if you can depend on having the hardware uh, to do that and not have to do both, because that's where a lot of games are right now. Uh, like I said, with something like Resident Evil 4 Remake, where it's like the game's already designed to run on hardware that doesn't have any ray tracing, right? This was a cross-gen game. The PlayStation 4 can't ray trace at all, right? So they had to already develop the game kind of traditionally and then maybe slap on a little bit of ray tracing features over the top of it. Um, uh, so, uh, modes like Cyberpunk's RT Overdrive mode are maybe a view of what could have been done from the ground up if the baseline hardware had been uh, more powerful to begin with, but something like this isn't even going to run on a PlayStation 5, right? So the idea with things like this, with the PlayStation 5 Pro pushing towards having uh, higher ray tracing performance, I think is really a preview of what we'll see more with like the PlayStation 6 generation of consoles. I think as we, if the PlayStation 6 generation of consoles has a high enough base level of ray tracing performance, then game developers, I think, could end up ditching, at least some of them, could end up ditching, um, you know, baked lighting entirely and just design using engines and using technologies that are just everything will be ray traced uh, to speed up game development. And so I think we are headed toward that future. So when it came to like the, uh, how this applies to like AMD graphics cards, right? RDNA 4 and the histor history of, you know, AMD graphics cards. When we were talking RDNA 2 with AMD 6000 series of graphics cards and having only kind of a weak level of ray tracing performance, not particularly usable uh, uh, when compared with the NVIDIA counterparts, uh, generally, it wasn't considered that big of a deal because the types of, um, uh, at least by me and a lot of other reviewers, because a lot of the game ray tracing implementations that you saw were something more along the lines of, like I said, the Resident Evil 4 remake, where the game looks great without ray tracing, turning it on, it kind of feels like a tacked on feature that may or may not even make the game look better, right? But um, I think that as time goes on, like I said, I think especially maybe when we hit like that PlayStation 6 type generation, I think we'll be seeing more and more games uh, like we're even seeing some now with, with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, just absolutely designed with ray tracing from the ground up. And that's where I think it's gonna be very important that AMD is more competitive on ray tracing. And GPU development takes a long time. It takes years. So it's very important that they're starting to, uh, you know, get that going earlier rather than later. So I think this is the right time for AMD to have a bigger push on ray tracing performance, uh, which seems to be kind of what, what we're indicating here is just that there's gonna be uh, additional performance and optimizations to make uh, ray tracing more of a, uh, of, of a reality as I think game developers will latch onto it as a way to uh, reduce game budgets and development time. Because that's, if you want my thoughts on the AAA gaming industry right now, I think they're in a, a weird uh, spiral of budgets are getting out of control to make games look cr uh, crazy big and crazy impressive. Um, but that means that uh, game development takes years and years and years uh, and, and, and it's extremely expensive. So honestly, anything that in the end could make games come out quicker, less expensive, um, I think, but still uh, look great could be a, a really good thing. So I am optimistic about the future of these technologies. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see where all of this goes. 
Uh, hopefully you guys found the video useful and or interesting. Again, whether or not any of these specifics end up being true, uh, who knows. Um, but I think it was interesting to take a look into ray tracing a bit and my current thoughts on the situation and all that. Uh, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.